Well, congratulations to all the five winners who received their Michael Jackson t-shirt shortly in the mail. Now, if you didn't get your card in, postcards only to Michael Jackson Sweepstakes, WNEP-TV, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Airport, Avoca, PA, 18641. You may be our next winner. We'll have some more pulled out tomorrow. Now, stay tuned for all the news next on Newswatch 16. Good evening, I'm Nolan Johannes. Karen Harch has the night off. Tonight in the news. The first family to go. I'm Bob Costantini in Centralia. Now that the move out in Centralia has begun, what does it mean to the people who live here? I'm Craig Stevens, and in just a moment, I'll let you know. Trading picket signs for paychecks. I'm Mark Davis. Joe Zone has the story of an end of an Olympic dream. Tom Clark has the hot stuff from the backyard. It's all next on Newswatch 16. In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Pilot Jack Rubin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is News Watch 16. Good evening. The population of Centralia is down by two tonight. The first family to move away from a 22-year-old underground mine fire with federal money for a new home left the Columbia County town this morning. News Watch 16's Bob Costantini was there when it happened. The moving van arrives earlier than expected at Peggy Chapman's Centralia home, but she and her daughter have had everything ready to go for a couple days. Peggy Chapman quickly accepted the government's offer to buy her house because she wants to get away from the mine fire. Yet she's lived here for over 12 years. Mm -hmm. I'm a little sad. Mm -hmm. I can't say that at all. Really. I'm going to miss a lot of my friends here. It's going to be hard, but I'll be glad to get all settled. Mm -hmm. And I have all this behind me. Moving out, Peggy Chapman is starting what may be a wave of homeowners leaving town. In a sense, the beginning of the end for Centralia. A lot of people who wish to stay, you know, that's entirely up to them. But uh, I figure it's going to be a new beginning. The only way to go is up from here. It doesn't even take two hours, and the moving out is finished. The van pulls away while Peggy Chapman locks the front door one last time. She's on her way to a new home in a nearby town, away from the mine fire and what she thinks may be its health hazards. Just a stone's throw away from the empty house is this buried time capsule, put here in 1966 for Centralia Centennial. It's supposed to be opened again in 2016, but with what started at that house today, you have to wonder what will be here in 2016. Bob Costantini, Newswatch 16, Centralia. Peggy Chapman's belongings arrived in her new hometown just a short while after they left Centralia. Mrs. Chapman will now be living in Mount Carmel, a few miles from the mine fire that forced her to move. She says she chose the home to be near her late husband's family, yet away from the mine fire. While Peggy Chapman was moving away her, to her new home, others were watching a major change beginning in their town. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens talked with her neighbors about what was going on. Peggy Chapman's home at 100 West Park Street in Centralia is now empty, but soon a lot of homes like this will be empty as hundreds of Centralians leave this town in search of new lives and new futures. For those that remain, that means the end of Centralia as they have known it. Just down the block, neighbors can hardly believe this day is here. They're chatting now about the day they too will move. It's sad, for one. You're losing your neighbors. How are you doing? I'm not I'm one of them that's going to move, but I still uh, feel bad for everybody else. I can't believe it. That's okay, all. It's hard to me, it just seems like it isn't so. I'll miss it. I was born and raised here. I'll miss it. I feel bad. A few tears. Maybe a lot. I can't say I'm going to miss it. Just I don't know if you have a heavy chest worrying about it. I have no idea where I'm going. Not everyone will leave Centralia, though. Some families have decided to stay here. But what does the future hold in store for them? I said this is going to be a sad time when it's all over. Is anybody leaving it? Yep. It's going to be a sad time. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Centralia.
There are 127 homes in Centralia considered close to where the underground mine fire is thought to be burning. 65 of them have been surveyed and given offers of purchase by the Columbia County Redevelopment Authority. 25 property owners have accepted those offers and will be moving soon. Officials in Centralia say 18 more purchase offers will go out Friday and 44 more next week. Last year, 400 property owners voted in favor of having their homes bought out by the government. And there's concern about the health of people in Centralia tonight. The State Department of Health continues a survey of the effects of the 22-year-old mine fire. Nurses are going house to house, taking blood pressures and blood and urine samples as part of that survey. They also fill out a health history of each resident. And just for comparison, they'll do the same thing in a nearby town not affected by the mine fire. The problem for the people in Centralia started back in May of 1962. That's when officials say a garbage fire spread underground and ignited coal seams beneath the community. The state and federal government spent years and over $5 million trying to put out that fire, but it kept burning under the homes in Centralia. Then in 1981, Young Todd Dombrowski almost fell into the flames when a hole opened up in his grandmother's backyard. That brought national attention to the case. And finally, after 21 years, the federal government approved $42 million to move those people who wanted to leave the dangers of the Centralia underground mine fire. This will tell you why some union workers accepted a contract they really didn't want. Stay with us for more on Newswatch 16. The auxiliary of Nesbitt Memorial Hospital, Kingston, will hold their annual June festival. Treat the entire family to a full day of games and homemade foods and fine entertainment. Enjoy, enjoy the sounds of the Iron Temple String Band. Sample our chicken and spaghetti dinners. Take aim at WNEP's Tom Clark in the Celebrity Splash. Start your summertime fun at the June festival, Wednesday, June 20th, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the hospital grounds. It's back to work for 300 Luzerne County Insulation Factory workers who are employed at the Certainty Factory. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis reports they accepted a contract they really did not want. You could almost see the pressure on the faces of the men and women as they entered St. Jude's School for the contract vote. The pressure is no paycheck for nearly four weeks now. And for people like Rick Scripp, that's why he and others voted to go back on the job. So, like I said, we're not satisfied, but we're going to have to live with it for three years. And next, next after next three years, maybe we'll get more. But at least you're going back to work and you'll be bringing home a paycheck. Well, that's the most important part about it is I have a boy going to college this year, and uh, there's extra money going out for college, so I have to get back. I'm glad to get back. The workers did not get a pay increase, but they also did not lose any benefits. And for Teresa Chelsea, that's important as she supports herself and two small children. Strike benefits are not enough to live on. I mean, you can buy food, that's about it. The 300 unionized workers here at Certainty now put down their picket signs and start picking up their tools again. The maintenance people go back immediately. The rest of the workers return on Monday. Now, while not everyone is exactly happy with their new contract, most everyone I talked to said they're just happy to be going back to work. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Mountaintop. Well, our chief meteorologist, Tom Clark, is next, and um, I understand that there's a little haze in the forecast, <laughs> right, Tom? A little bit of haze, but a nice change coming. Good. Big thunderstorms on the radar tonight, folks. We'll take a closer look when we come back. We're getting ready to have some fun in a good cause. Helping big brothers and big sisters help kids. The more people who bowl, the more money that'll roll in. So be a sponsor. Be a bowler. Help kids who need someone to look up to. Get the whole story. Call your local Big Brothers Big Sisters agency. Join the big team. Bowl for kids' sake! Seven hundred Goldsboro residents are still without power tonight. PPNL officials say at three this afternoon, about fourteen thousand people in Goldsboro, Toby Hanna, Mount Pocono, and Newfoundland had their power knocked out, probably by thunderstorms. PPNL says they don't know how long the power will still be out tonight in the Goldsboro area. Well, it looks as though that's not the only place that might be having another thunderstorm. Things don't look so good out in the backyard, from what I understand, Tom. Normally, it's dark out here. We got a lot of heavy clouds overhead. I hear some thunder in the distance. 
And you'll have to bear with me tonight because, folks, I have a bad throat, so I hope I survive the next three and a half minutes. With a little bit of thunder overhead, let me show you the temperature as it stands now. Down uh, through the 80s now with the cloud cover, 83 in this backyard. The humidity is up quite high. The wind southwest to 12, barometer holding steady. The air quality today unhealthful with a 103 in Wilkesbury, 95 moderate in Scranton. A lot of haze and pollutants in the air today. 92 that high, that tied a record today. And that stood, uh, well, it was set back in 1967, so almost broke it today. It was close. 70 the low last night, 40 the record low. A shot there of all the haze over Scranton in the background there. Just a, a muggy, murky, sultry kind of day, folks. Here's the radar scan uh, from 4 o'clock this afternoon. Look at all these thunderstorms that were sprouting up over the mountains. There's some over Goldsboro and down to the south there. And they formed kind of a line, as you can see, an hour later from about uh, New Milford down to Williamsport. And uh, that's what's bearing down on the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area tonight. As we go through the live scan, I can show you what's going on. A lot of showers from Honesdale down across uh, up near Scranton. Look at the green in there indicating heavier rainfall. And one of my weather observers called from down in Sealands Grove. He had an inch and a third in just about two hours. So some very heavy rain with these storms. Heavy downpours, maybe some, even some hail and strong gusty winds will affect only about 30 percent of the viewing area this evening, but thunderstorms will be around for quite a while. Let's zoom in on the 30-mile scan, and, well, here it is. Take a look at the green uh, west of, Wil of Wilkesbury. That's coming down. Here, I'm standing here. It's dry, but look just northwest of Scranton. Some heavy rain bearing down in that part of the area, so uh, keep an eye out on the sky tonight. That could get rough for a while. Here's the Newswatch 16 color satellite picture coming up. There are the storms over Pennsylvania. 98 a record high in Boston. There's a tropical low coming in over uh, northern Florida. That won't affect our weather. Uh, waste deep water out in Kansas. Eight inches of rain the past 24 hours. Look at the thunderstorms out that way. But here's a line here. That line is the leading edge of cooler, drier air. Hallelujah. It's coming in tomorrow, and things will cool off nicely tomorrow night. And wait until you feel how comfortable it is on Friday. Now here's my forecast for tonight. Flash and splash in some neighborhoods. Some heavy thunderstorms roaming around most of the evening hours. Low temperatures not too far from 70 over the viewing area tonight. And I want to say hi to all the boys and girls and their parents I spoke to today at the Smith Nelson Shahola Elementary School out there in Pike County. I know you're all watching tonight. Now a muggy low, 69 degrees. Here we go for tomorrow coming up front comes through, probably early in the day, a few scattered thunderstorms with it, 86 in Wilkes-Barre, about 84 in Mount Pocono. Uh, the northwest wind will be coming down in the afternoon, ushering in that cooler and drier air. Now the health watch is reflecting the uh, <clears throat> frontal passage tomorrow and low barometer, concentration low. Sunrise and sunset, 5.30, and at about 8.37, the sun goes down now. Thunderstorms around tonight, a very humid night and muggy, a chance of a thunderstorm tomorrow and then clearing out nicely tomorrow night. How about 77 for a high on Friday? Is that okay? It'll be delightful. Sunny on Saturday, the weekend, it'll warm up again early next week once again. So that's it. Still dry in the backyard, Nolan. All right, Tom. And the big question is, will your voice last till 11 tonight? I hope so. All right, the answer on the update. Coming up next on Newswatch 16, one local kid's Olympic dreams come to an end. Plus, Joe Zone begins Sports Challenge. Tonight, a battle on the tennis court. Let's hear it for the boy. Tonight at 7. Well, Joe, you predicted it last night. You were absolutely right. I get one every once in a while, right? That was easy, though, with the Celtics. I'll tell you, you get the Boston Celtics to a seventh game and in their place, and you've got troubles. Lakers had some troubles last night. Boston won another NBA championship. They beat the Lakers 114, make that 111-102. It feels great. Whatever happened to the Los Angeles dynasty? You guys were talking about a dynasty. Here's where it is, right here. One Celtic who showed championship form in the title game, Cedric Maxwell. He helped Boston build an early lead. 
He paced the Celtics with 24 points. Boston dominated the Lakers off the boards. Kevin McHale and company were not to be denied. Larry Bird was the MVP. His overall floor play kept the Celtics offense in sync. Dennis Johnson was one of the three players to score 20 or more. Bird downplayed his accomplishments and talked about his teammates. Well, I think Robert and Max played a lot better and they deserved the MP tonight. But uh, throughout the series, I played pretty well. And I was a little disappointed in game six that I get the ball in my hands uh, when the crucial part of the game was going on. But uh, the guys came back and reacted well to it and played hard. After the big win last night, the Celtics had a chance today to go on one-on-one -on -one with President Reagan. The president congratulated the team during ceremonies in the White House Rose Garden, as the president so appropriately put it, from the Boston Garden to the Rose Garden. Well, about a month ago, you remember, I proposed to you a sports challenge, a chance for you to come and get me at the sport of your choice. Tonight, the first of those challenges, a tennis match. You can tell just by watching Clark Van Orden that he's a pretty good tennis player. The 33-year-old Dallas police officer plays two or three times a week. He challenged me because he thought it might be fun. Little did he know we'd be playing on the hottest day of the year. After the warm-up at the neutral Kirby Park courts, Clark recited the rules. I will play three sets, best of three, uh, tiebreaker, seven-point tiebreaker, after uh, six all in any set, and uh, we'll go from there. You gonna try to clean my clock? We're gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> nice of him, I thought, to even consider a tiebreaker. That's about as considerate, though, as he got. Clark won the choice for serve and proceeded to go to work on me. Before I knew it hit me, I was down three love. Clark's serve was a good one, and while I was able to win three games, he held his service to win the first set, 6-3. The second set went differently. Clark and I held service through the first six games. For my part, I was a bit more aggressive, and for his part, Clark was feeling the effects of the 90-degree heat. I felt it, too, and was running out of gas faster than you can say. Who cares if it's got caffeine? Bring a gallon. Clark won the next three games and had himself a 6-3, 6-3 win. If had a bottom line, I would say your surf certainly was big of ass for you, huh? Yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it works, I usually do pretty well, but when it doesn't, it's all over. Happy with 6-3, 6-3? No, <laughs> I wanted 6-love, six 6-love, six but you're better than I thought. Not that good. If you've got a sports challenge, drop it to me here at the station and we'll see if we can get it done. We're starting to talk high school football again, especially the kids getting ready for the various summer all-star games. The Unico East-West game will be played June 27th, Wyoming Valley Stadium. You know what? Something to make that game a little extra special this year. Dan Marino, rookie quarterback of the Dolphins, rookie of the year, in fact, will be the game's honorary captain. Marino, who is an All-American at Pitt, will be here for that Unico game on the 27th. Many of you remember Rich Meeker. He's the cyclist from Plymouth who's working so hard to make the U.S. Olympic team. Well, Meeker learned yesterday that he will not be on the team this time. Meeker bypassed an important regional competition a few weeks ago. He was sick, felt he would not do well there. But he did race with his cycling team in Long Island. The U.S. Cycling Olympic Committee apparently felt Meeker should have been at that meet, sick or not, especially since he was racing elsewhere. Meeker, of course, feels terrible about this whole thing. He is thankful to all of you people who contributed to the fund that helped pay his training expenses. I talked with the Wilkesbury Chamber of Commerce this afternoon. They organized that fund drive. They say all of the money will be accounted for to the people who donated to that fund. Most of it, of course, has already been spent. The thing that bothers me about this whole incident is why someone didn't tell Meeker he had to be at that regional meet. According to Meeker, no one, not his coach, not the Olympic Cycling Committee, no one told him he had to be there. Now that's wrong because somebody is responsible for these kids. It's somebody's job to make sure that they are where they are supposed to be when they're supposed to be. Somebody didn't do their job and Rich Meeker has paid the price and I think that's sad. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot and I'll see you at 11 o'clock. We got lots of stuff. Hey, uh, could you coach me in a little tennis sometime? No, you could uh, coach me though. Maybe I'll give you the tennis challenge. Okay, pal. Thanks a lot, Joe. We'll see you on the update. Newswatch 16 continues with another first for the Luzerne County Courthouse. We'll run that story up the pole in just a moment. WNEP and Pepsi present the Michael Jackson Your sweepstakes. Generation, you're loving what to do. I put a Pepsi in the bowl, and that's choice enough for you. Hey, hey, hey. 
A single postcard could have you and a friend at the concert event of the year, Michael Jackson and the Jacksons. All entries are eligible for spectacular daily prizes, plus the grand prize drawing of tickets to see Michael Jackson live in concert. For more details, tune in Dialing for Dollars weekdays at 4. There was a very special flag raising ceremony today at the Luzerne County Courthouse. Dozens of courthouse employees were at the event, and over the years they've seen flags from other countries flying outside their office windows, all raised in ceremony. But today was the first time the courthouse has held a ceremony honoring the American flag. And as one employee said, it's because of the American flag that all the others are able to fly here with us. All right, and tomorrow is Flag Day. You fly the flag, too, outside your home. That would be nice. And that has been News Watch 16 for this Wednesday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update. We will go in search of the ice cream man. Ah, yes. World News Tonight is next. And among other things, a look at Walter Mondale's possible choices for a running mate. We'll be back at 11 for the team. Thank you for being with us. Good night.